Hey folks, this is IOE3 and we're back playing some more World of Tanks. I don't know if you can tell, my voice still isn't back yet. I was sick for a couple weeks there, my voice was shot for over a week. And it's still not fully back yet, which is why I haven't been casting World of Tanks games. So I've been really sorry for that, I've been trying to put up as, as much content as I could. It didn't involve me talking straight for like 15 minutes, because I, I still can't really do that. Oh, thank you, Mr. E75. We totally needed that pit maneuver. If I was Epic, who, who's currently driving his T54E1, I would be really tempted to shoot that guy, except for the fact that he wouldn't have been reloaded, so yeah. Obviously, he didn't do that. <clears throat> Sorry. So, this is, of course. Oh, I can remember the name of this map. Krelia, yeah, Toto would have got that in another like 30 minutes. As a tier 10 game with Krelia, there's only ooh, a couple of tier 10s. Two tier 10 RDs, one on each side, and an object. Two CX8 who must have thought this is a dream match because he is in the best. Ooh, there we go. Best game possible he could ever be in, and he's down this side. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Thankfully, he doesn't see us, and ooh, he's trapped over right here, and aww, Epic only got the one shot into him. I think he did track him, though, or retrack him, as the case may be, so any other friendly fire that entered that guy is totally going to be Epic spotting damage. And there's a, is there really a T-71 up there? What? That poor guy, why? Uh, okay, so if you are scouting this map in anything higher than like a tier 5 game, do not ever go up on that hill. Unless you are the first one up there and you guarantee you that your team is smart enough to close the door behind you, it's suicide to go up there. Now considering this is a public match, the terms smart and your team are rarely ever apply in the same sentence, so just don't. Much better spots are in the middle of the map, in the bushes, along the whatever. Just for the swamp on either side of the map is a great place to scout. You can sit in the bushes to pass the scouting, you'll be safe. Okay, so it looks like Epic has Eagle Eye on this particular tank, so you'll see every once in a while little decals pop up down the bottom near his ammo rack, or his ammo. I'll show you, or I guess this clip, by this clip. Wow, I've been away from this game for too long. Anyways, so Epic is currently, he's trapped, but he's, he kind of is where he wants to be. He can get shots out on tanks that really like that poor T-30. They'll put themselves in bad positions, and he can just burst fire them down. Now that SU-152, now I thought that thing was in cover, but apparently, Epic knows how to snipe with this tank, and that was the T-92 trying to give Epic a birthday present. Unfortunately for the T-92, it's not Epic's birthday, so he couldn't accept it. <laughs> now there is an IS-8 still up on that hill up there. He's going to give our guys trouble if we don't kill him soon before we try to push across this dip. He will be able to shoot down into the sides of us and murder us. So it looks like that's Epic's next task to try and root this guy out. Now, there we go. Epic understands the risks that you can't just glide across there without either taking this ISA out first or disabling him in some way. So it looks like he's trying to sneak shots on line firing in a auto loading tank. I don't recommend that. Because of the limited ammo loadout of any auto loader, blind firing is a good way to run out of it. And there we are. ISA is taken care of. We can push through the valley unopposed. And it looks like the other side of the map is doing fairly well. We're winning this particular battle. 9, 10 to 3. There's a poor T20 prototype. Who's not going to get out of this situation? Good use of Well, the periscope is dying too. Is still trying to give him birthday presents. The good news is that there was a tank in front of us to take the shot for us. 
it, he did, no, no, wait, my bad, he just used his repair skill and repaired the track. That was a really, really smart move on Epic's part. I've seen way too many tankers that get nervous after they get blasted by Artie and just automatically repair the tracks with their repair kits. Unless there's an immediate threat, save that repair kit. You might need it later. Even if you don't, it's three grand you don't have to spend. If an Artie just shot you, unless there's another Artie that can kill you right then and there, don't waste the repair kit. It's not worth it. Unless, of course, you're caught out in the open or there's some immediate threat. And it looks like Epic's going to charge up towards the likely spots of the artillery. We have an ISU-152 sweeping up the other side. And the rest of our tanks are hunting down an IS-3. That poor IS-3. He's got like 12 people trying to hunt him down. Ooh, we found both already, and there is the T-92. We're gonna repay the birthday present. Oh, can't quite get the second shot in before he moves out of range. But I'm sure the ICU will be glad to give him the happy news. Yep, there we go. And that is... Ooh, no, there's still an IS-3 out there. Really? Nope, it's dead. Good game, well played. 1,000 experience for that battle without premium, definitely worth it. You can see just how many people he affected, put two or more shots into everyone, and almost everyone he damaged something on. He did 4,480 damage in that battle. That was a pretty incredible carry. He did a lot of damage, not quite twice as much as the next couple guys in damage, but he still did an amazing amount. He definitely did more than twice the amount of the leading guy on the enemy team. Wow. Now, this was kind of a team effort. In a lot of these games, you'll see about half of your team has done a massive amount of damage and the rest of your team is done like zero. In this game, most of his team got above a thousand damage, which is pretty incredible. There's only a couple of guys who managed to trail under that and one M0103 managed to pick up zero damage at all. Probably was AFK the whole game. Not certain how he died. Anyways. <laughs> 17 shots fired, 15 of those were direct hits, and 13 of those actually went into the target, which is really, really effective fire for an autoloader. It's the kind of thing you need to do in an autoloader if you want to do actual damage. This thing only has like 30 shots. You do not have the shots to fire out into the midst of space and the map in hopes that they might connect to something. This is not a Churchill 3. I'm very certain you can actually do that in a Churchill 3. Just run across the entire map holding down the fire button and you won't run out of ammo by the end of the game. I haven't tested it but I really really want to test it at some point. It didn't take much return fire and it didn't do a whole lot of detecting but that brute force fast firing gun is what won the game. He took tanks out methodically and he took them out before they could react to what was going on. That IS-8, for example, on the hill got hit by a friendly for 800 damage. While it was trying to run away, Epic nailed it for about five or 600 damage and took it out of the game. It didn't have time to back around that corner before he could kill it. That's the kind of concentrate firepower that autoloaders are great for. For a six minute game, he made 40 grand and a thousand experience, this was totally worth it. Thank you so much, Epic, for saying this in. It was such a joy to watch this game. Thank you so much for hitting that like or subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. This is IOE Throughout.